Hi friends, uh, welcome to EduTabs. So welcome to this particular session wherein we are revising some of the important MCQs for your phase 2 examination. So friends, yes, we know that the results are out and uh, I can see mixed responses there in the chat section below. So guys, do not worry if you aren't selected. I know it's very easy to say, but sometimes, you know, really uh, there is no answer for uh, so many things that happen, right? So I can completely understand how you guys are feeling right now, right? And uh, those who have sent your essays by tomorrow evening, all of you will get the feedback from my end, okay? Uh, seven essays, I'll be mailing it today and the rest uh, tomorrow, right? Right? So, please be patient and you will be receiving it by tomorrow evening. Right? So, do not worry and again for those who couldn't clear, uh, please do not lose hope. Right? Uh, so, that is something you know, uh, a very important thing that I wanted to tell you before the start of this session uh, because I know how it feels at the end. Right? So, um, what we will do is if you have any questions, we can see at the end as well. But right now, let's just begin. Uh, today, we'll be having less number of people because many of them uh, would have, you know, known about their result yesterday and then they would have realized that now uh, it's going to be the next attempt that they're going to go for, right? So, the cutoffs, I think the they have crossed many because the number of uh, candidates that they have selected for phase two is less, right? So, that is the reason the cutoffs would be high, okay? And... Um, now let us just uh, see what is what are the things that we are going to do in today's session. So we are going to have a quick look at uh, the finance MCQs, current affairs MCQs, starting from May to August 2019, right? So guys, um, I really hope that all of you who are there today in the session would be interested in answering the questions for uh, of these. Uh, uh, of the session that we're going to take today, right? So let's just quickly begin today's uh, class. So I'll be giving the questions here. As usual, you need to tell me the answers. And uh, when I start seeing your answers, we'll just quickly begin with the session, right? So the first question that you can see is um, in the month of August 2019, the Reserve Bank of India has transferred what amount to the government of India as a part of its excess capital reserves, right? So you, this is a very simple question, right? But this was in news all the time. So you guys have to know this uh, and it is really important as well so guys quickly I want answers because there is a low attendance today I can see Mohammad Saddam Aditya Jambal most of you Kapil Patil good I can see the answers so Sri Ram Vinay K Singh uh, Avinash Yadav all of you are giving me the right answers uh, in fact they're attempting answers that is itself okay so let me just quickly begin now so yes the answer is 1.76 lakh crore Moving on to the second one, recently the government has extended the KCC facility to animal husbandry farmers and fisheries for their working capital requirements. It provides the benefit of interest subvention of how much percentage to these farmers, right? So quickly give me the answers. Uh, so Kisan credit card facility we are talking about. So this was there uh, in the announcement. So this is again important guys. So these kind of interest subventions, subsidies, all these are very easily asked in your examination. So I can see that uh, you people have started answering for the, uh, this particular question. So yes, the correct answer is 2, right? Moving on, in the month of August 2019, RBI has ordered banks to not include the non-cash withdrawal transactions under free ATM transactions. So which of the following is a part of these free transactions, okay? So this is an important directive uh, towards cashless economy. So quickly, the answer is all of the above, right? So which of these uh, is a part of free transactions? Balance inquiry is a part of it. Checkbook request, payment of taxes, fund transfers. So all these things form a part of free transactions, right? Moving on, according to recent data released by RBI in the month of August 2019, fake notes of 500 have been increased by how much percentage in the year 2018-19 as compared to the previous year. Okay, so we are talking about fake currencies here. So you need to quickly give me an answer for that. I can, I can see many of you are joining in right now as well. Uh, so the answer is guys 121. Okay, so this much percentage increase, it's huge. Moving on, according to a recent clarification issued by the Central Board of Direct Taxes in the month of August 2019, tax deducted at source TDS of 2% shall be deducted on cash withdrawals above dash crore from 1st December 2019. So again, um, we are curbing uh, the transactions taken done in cash. Okay, so we are moving towards cashless economy. Again, uh, an initiative towards that. So kindly give me a quick answer for it. 
so the right one is 2 so 2 crores okay from 1st of September 2019 next according to the recent clarification in the month of August 2019 by the central board of direct taxes small startups with turnover up to how much crore will continue to get the promised tax holiday as specified in section 80 IAC of the income tax act 1961 okay so all of you need to attempt this particular question so the answer is 25 right Moving forward, according to the financial stability report published in June 2019, the provision coverage ratio of all the scheduled commercial banks increased sharply from 52.4 percentage in September 2018 to how much in March 2019, right? So I can see most of you coming out with the answer. So please keep the pace going. So the right one is 60.6 percentage, okay? Next question, according to the financial stability report published in June 2019, scheduled commercial banks capital to risk weighted assets ratio improved from 13.7 percentage in September 2018 to how much in March 2019. So quickly give me the answers guys and I can see most of you are uh, taking the initiative and giving the answers. So I can see Tanmay, Prashant, Shubham, all of you are there, Nikhil again. Okay, so the answer is 14.3 percentage. So I'll be really quick with the questions and you guys need to come out with the answers as quickly possible. Next, according to the financial stability report published in June 2019, the gross non-performing asset ratios of all the scheduled commercial banks is dashed in March 2019. So I can see that most of you are confused between two to three options. Right, so this is the right time to clarify the doubts that you have. The answer for this particular question, it is 9.3 percentage. Next one, recently in July 2019, which of the following organizations has decided to set up internal working group to review liquidity management framework? And the answer is the Reserve Bank of India. Moving forth, recently in June 2019, RBI has set up working group to review regulatory norms for core investment companies under the chairmanship of which of the following persons. So again, uh, this is a question based on the head of the committees. These kind of questions again are expected in general finance current affairs in the paper. So the answer is Tapan Re. Yes. Next, recently in July 2019, which of the following international financial institutions have done analysis about Indian stock market and revealed that turnover ratio of the Indian stock market has fallen significantly in the last 10 years, right? So we are talking about an international organization who has given this particular information. So the answer is the World Bank. Next, according to the National Payments Corporation of India, UPI transaction has risen by what percentage in June 2019? This is important. And the correct one is 2.8 percentage. Moving forth, uh, recently in July 2019, which of the following PSBs or public sector banks has approved raising of rupees 7,000 crore through additional tier 1 capital, AT1 capital? So the correct one is the State Bank of India, SBI. Next one, recently in June 2019, in the Union Budget 2019-20, the government has decided to infuse dash capital in PSBs to boost credit. Okay, so infusion of capital is a topic again here. So I'll give you a second or two so that you can come out with the right answer. So it is 70,000 crore. Next, under the Union Budget 2019-20 released in July 2019, it is proposed to consider increasing minimum public shareholding in the listed companies from the current threshold of 25% to how much? This is again important. So whenever there are announcements of this kind, you know, you need to note down because you will find such questions in the paper. The answer is 35%. Next one, as per the Union Budget 2019-20 released in July 2019, tax rate reduced to 25% for companies with annual turnover up to dash. So the right one here is 400 crore. Next one, in order to discourage large amount of cash withdrawal from bank accounts, government has proposed under the Union Budget 2019-20 to provide for TDS at the rate of dash on cash withdrawal by a person in excess of rupees 1 crore in a year from his bank account. So most of you coming out with the answers. 
and I can see that these are correct ones. So you are on the right track, I can say. So the answer is 2 percentage. Next, to widen the tax net, the government has proposed in July 2019 to introduce how much percentage of tax deducted at source, TDS, on all payments made by individuals to contractors or professionals in excess of rupees 50 lakh a year. So the correct one here, it is 5 percentage. Next, recently in June 2019, in a budget, uh, uh, the finance minister has proposed to increase the statutory limit for FPI investment in a company from dash to sectoral foreign investment limit with option given to the concerned corporate uh, to limit it to a lower threshold. So you need to tell me what is the percentage here. Take a second or two. And the correct one here, it is 24 percentage. Next, recently in July 2019, it has been announced that Credit Guarantee Enhancement Corporation will be set up in 2019-20. Which of the following will regulate the CGEC? And the correct one is the Reserve Bank of India. Moving forth, recently in July 2019, the Finance Minister in her budget speech has proposed SEBI will have to transfer dash of its surplus from the general fund every year to the Consolidated Fund of India that is managed by the central government. Again, an important announcement here. So even if you don't know the answer, just try attempting the question because anyways, we are going to discuss the answer. So the answer is 75 percentage here. Next question, recently in July 2019, the government has proposed to transfer the regulatory authority over housing finance sector to which of the following organizations? So again, the power overhauls that are taking place recently, the answer is the Reserve Bank of India. Next, recently in July 2019, it has been announced that investment in startups hits a record dash in January, June 2019. So the answer is US dollars 1.17 billion actually. Next question guys, recently in July 2019, CBDT has issued a directive in the Central Action Plan for 2019-20 according to which the Income Tax Department has been tasked to add dash new return file, filers in the current financial year. So take a second or two and give me the correct answer for this particular question. So I can see all of you attempting it. So that is good, right? So the answer is 1.3 crore. Moving on, recently in July 2019, RBI board has finalized a medium term strategy, a roadmap to improve regulation and supervision among other functions of the central bank. This medium term strategy is in line with the global central bank's plan to strengthen the regulatory and supervisory mechanism. Which of the following is the title of the medium term strategy given by the Reserve Bank of India? You need to tell me the title of this particular media term strategy. So the answer is Utkash 2022. This media term strategy finalized by RBI is for how many years? So we are talking about Utkash only. So you need to tell me the guidelines for how many years. And the answer is for three years, right? Next, recently in July 2019, an internal working group of RBI has proposed an extension of over-the-counter forex exchange traded currency derivative markets to how much? To what time basically? Okay. So the answer here, it is 9 p.m. Moving on, recently in July 2019, which of the following banks has waived IMPS, NEFT and RTGS charges? Again, important pushing uh, the citizens of India towards cashless economy, right? So the correct one here, it is the State Bank of India. Next, so we have skipped some, uh, yeah, 30, 31, two questions because they were not relevant anymore, okay? Uh, they have become obsolete, so directly jumping to 32nd. So recently, the Union Cabinet has approved eight amendments to the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code that will enforce a dash timeline for the insolvency resolution process. So again, timeline is very important here. A major change was being done here. So you need to tell me the answer for it, giving you one or two seconds for coming out with the correct answers in the chat section below. So the right one is 330 days. 
नेक्स्ट रिसेंटली इन जुलाई 2019 आरबीआई हैज इंपोज मॉनेटरी पेनाल्टी ऑफ रुपीज सेवेंटी मिलियन ऑन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग बैंक्स फॉर नॉन कंप्लायस ऑफ आरबीआई डायरेक्शन एंड द राइट वन ह्योर इज द स्टेट बैंक ऑफ इंडिया नेक्स्ट इन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग डेज द आयकर दिवस इज सेलिब्रेटेड इन इंडिया okay so i can see here there is some change out there so guys if there is any change in question number okay 32 so i'll just uh, go through it and come up with the right answer when we upload the pdf right okay so here it is the answer is state bank of india and aikar divas the answer was 24th of july right okay so 35th question on your screen guys uh, according to the fugitive economic offenders act 2018 the central government has advised the public sector banks to obtain certified copy of the passport of promoters or directors and other authorized signatories of companies availing loan facilities of more than how much right so the answer here is 50 crore right next recently in july 2019 an inter ministerial committee on virtual currencies has submitted its report along with a draft bill banning of cryptocurrency and regulation of official digital currency bill 2019 which of the following persons is the head of this particular inter ministerial committee the correct one is subhash chandra next guys so this is a two marker let's just read the question first so recently in july 2019 parliament has passed a bill which is titled banning of unregulated deposit schemes bill 2019 to curb the ponzi schemes it seeks to help tackle the menace of illicit deposit taking activities in the country which at present are exploiting regulatory gaps and lack of strict administrative measures to do poor and gullible people of their hard earned money so the question here says which of the following are not one of the features of banning of unregulated deposit schemes bill 2019 take a second or two and read these options and tell me which is not one of the features okay so this is about a bill that has uh, that was uh, that is titled banning of unregulated deposit schemes bill this is an important information so just take your time the answer is none of the above so all are the features of this particular bill okay so you can see the um, answers there 1 2 3 4 all the four options are correct next uh, the repeated offenders under the bill will be punishable with imprisonment between dash to dash okay so again this is regarding one of the provisions in the bill so guys the right answer for it is 5 years to 10 years right next recently in july 2019 five public sector banks have extended in principle approval of loan up to how much under the psb loans in 59 minute scheme so again it is 5 crore okay next recently in july 2019 computer age management services cams has imposed a limit of dash per month on withdrawals from its my cams online platform so giving you a second or two the answer is 10 lakh next see the paragraph first recently lok sabha has passed companies amendment bill which seeks to tighten the corporate social responsibility compliance and to reduce the load of cases on the national company law tribunal the bill has amended the companies act 2013 the bill will ensure further ease of doing business for the companies and provide better governance framework so the question here states according to the recent amendment any unspent annual csr funds must be transferred to one of the funds under schedule 7 of the act within dash of the financial year so how many months one needs to take and the correct answer here guys it is 6 months right next according to the recent amendment National Financial Reporting Authority can debar a member of firm from appointment as an auditor or internal auditor of a company or performing company's valuation for dash to dash in case of proven misconduct okay so the answer here is 6 months and 10 years 
Next, recently in July 2019, Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board has set timelines for liquidation process. The new rules say that the process must be finished within dash of its commencement. This is again important. So the answer here is one year, right? Moving forth, in the month of June 2019, a high-level committee on deepening of digital payments has submitted its report to RBI. Which of the following persons is the head of the committee? And the answer is Nandan Nilekani, right? Next, let's see the paragraph first, two questions based on that. So recently in June 2019, RBI has revised its guidelines on bank's exposure to large borrowers. However, RBI had introduced a large borrower framework three years ago to reduce concentration risk in a banking industry laden with bad loans. But in order to capture these exposures and concentration risk more accurately and to align with international norms, RBI has made amendments in large borrower framework. In recent amendments, RBI has introduced the concept of economic interdependence criteria in definition of connected counterparties. According to it, if one of the firms were to experience financial difficulties, then related parties are also likely to encounter funding or repayment difficulties. Now, let us see the question. The 45th question based on this particular paragraph, the revised guidelines on banks' exposure to large borrowers had taken effect from. So the correct one here is from 1st April 2019, right? Moving to the next question, guys, uh, as per the recent amendments in the larger borrow framework, RBI has asked banks to ensure that the sum of all exposures to one counterparty does not exceed dash of the tier one capital. This is again important. So I can see most of you coming out with the right answer for most of the questions. So in the right track, if not, at least have a look at the correct one. So the right one here is five percentage. Next, recently in June 2019, which of the following stock exchanges has implemented its interoperability framework among clearing corporations? And the answer is BSE, Bombay Stock Exchange. Next, recently in June 2019, RBI has formed a six-member committee to review the entire gamut of automated teller machines, charges and fees under the chairmanship of which of the following persons? So, I can see most of you answering these questions and the correct one is VG Kannan. <clears throat> Next, uh, a two marker question. Let's read the paragraph. So RBI has issued a new prudential framework for resolution of stressed assets in its recent circular dated 7th June 2019. There are three major changes made in the new circular. First, the central bank has made it voluntary for lenders to take defaulters to the bankruptcy court. Second, framework now applies to a larger universe of lenders, which includes small banks and NBFCs. Third, panel provisions have been introduced for lenders. So the new norms leave it to the discretion of lenders and give them dash to start working on a resolution plan from the day of default. Okay. So this is again an important development. You need to tell me the answer. And the correct one is 30 days. Okay. Next question based on the same paragraph. This new prudential framework for resolution of stressed assets will not be applicable on which of the following entities. So you need to read this and tell me the answer for it quickly. One or two seconds I'll be giving you. The right one is RRBs, that is the Regional Rural Bank. Okay. Next, so we are done halfway through. 100 questions as usual in the session today. So 51, uh, 50 have been completed. Let's move towards the second half. Right. So which of the following person's appointment has been recently approved by RBI as interim chairman uh, CMD of Jammu and Kashmir Bank? Chairman and Managing Director. So the correct answer here, it is R.K. Chibber. Next one, recently in June 2019, SEBI has proposed informant mechanism to curb insider trading. In this informant mechanism, genuine whistleblowers could get maximum monetary reward of rupees dash as well as amnesty from regulatory action. And the correct answer here is 1 crore, right? 
Moving forth, recently in June 2019, RBI has given directions to the commercial banks to offer basic savings bank deposit account, a minimum of how many withdrawals are allowed in a month, including the ATM withdrawals, right? And the correct answer here is four. Next, which of the following IT company got the contract from RBI in the month of June 2019 to implement centralized information and managing system, that CIMS? So the correct answer here, it is TCS. Moving forward, the committee was appointed in December 2018 to review the economic capital framework for the Reserve Bank. Which of the following persons is the head of this committee? Very simple question, right? This is like a revision. I don't think this question can be there in phase two because it's, it's uh, asked, right? The answer is Bimal Jalan. Next, recently in June 2019, which of the following international financial institution has announced investment worth 30 US doll million dollars in Indian school finance company? And the answer is International Financial Co uh, Finance Corporation, IFC. Recently, in June 2019, which of the following has set up a panel to review margins on derivatives? And the answer here is SEBI. Next, coming to the paragraph-based question, you can see the paragraph on your screens. According to the report released by Basel Committee on Bank Supervision in the month of June 2019, RBI has fallen short of meeting tougher requirements set by the Basel Three Norms. The semi-annual report has been brought out by BCBS, a committee under the Bank for International Settlements. The report has looked at adoption status of Basel Three standards by 30 global systemically important banks as of end May 2019. This committee of banking Super, uh, banking supervisory authorities aims to enhance the understanding of key supervisory issues and also improve the quality of banking supervision worldwide. So the question on your screen, which of the following Indian banks are covered under the BCBS global systemically important banks? This is important. See this question again, friends. So give me the answer in one or two seconds. So it is all 1, 2 and 3, SBI, ICICI and HDFC. Next, Indian GSIBS are in the process of implementing the rules on IRRBB. We will see about this. These regulations refer to the current or prospective risk to the bank's capital and earnings arising from adverse movements and in interest rates that affect the bank's book positions. So in IRRBB, the second R stands for what? Okay, so quickly give me the answer for this particular question. So it is risk, okay, the full form of IRRBB, it is interest rate risk in the banking book, okay. Next, which of the following persons has chaired the 20th meeting of the Financial Stability and Development Council held in the month of June 2019? Okay, so all of you are coming out with the correct answers. So it is Nirmala Sitaraman. Next, which of the following private sector banks and Bharat Financial Inclusion Limited have announced their merger in the month of June 2019? So the correct one is Indusin Bank. Next, let us see this paragraph first. Recently, in June 2019, the Mutual Fund Advisory Committee has proposed that the exposure limits of liquid funds to non-banking finance companies and housing finance companies be reduced in a phased manner. Currently, liquid funds can have an aggregate 40% exposure to these lenders, including 25% to NBFCs and 15% to housing finance companies. So, which of the following had set up the Mutual Fund Advisory Committee? So the right answer is SEBI. Okay. Next question. The Mutual Fund Advisory Committee has proposed to reduce the NBFC and HFC exposure to DASH and DASH respectively. So the correct answer is 20% and 10% respectively. The Mutual Fund Advisory Committee has also proposed a DASH cap on the extent of debt fund exposure to the so-called credit enhanced securities. I'll give you one or two seconds for this particular question. It is 10 percentage. 
According to the government data released in June 2019, the number of willful defaulters in nationalized banks has increased by over dash in the last five years to March 2019. And the answer is 60 percentage. Next question, which of the following accountancy firm has decided in June 2019 to audit cryptocurrencies? The answer is PricewaterhouseCoopers. This question was there in the paper, I believe. Okay, next, see the paragraph here. Uh, recently, in June 2019, CMS has been launched. The system will enable members of the public to lodge their complaints on its website against any of the regulated entities with public interface such as commercial banks, urban cooperative banks, and non-banking financial companies, among others. The system will be accessible on desktop as well as on mobile devices. The system provides features such as acknowledgement through SMS, email notification, status tracking through unique registration number, receipt of closure advices and filing of appeals where applicable. It also solicits voluntary feedback on the customer's experience. So the question here is in CMS, M stands for what? The answer is management. I would appreciate if you give me the complete uh, full form of CMS here. Okay, so answers coming in. Great. The next question, which of the following has launched CMS, right? Uh, so the answer for this particular question, it is RBI, the Reserve Bank of India. Moving forth, let's see the next paragraph. It says the government of India has recently constituted a working group for the revision of the current series of WPI. Okay, the working group has totaled 187 members. The terms of reference of the group include selecting the most appropriate base year for the preparation of a new official series of index numbers of WPI and PPI in India. The group will also review the commodity basket of the current series of WPI and suggest additions, deletions of commodities in the light of structural changes in the economy witnessed in the past eight years. It will also review the existing system of price collection in particular for manufacturing sector and suggest the changes for improvement to decide on the computational methodology to be adopted for monthly WPI or PPI. And the question is, the 187 member group has been formed under the chairmanship of which of the following persons? So I can see many of you has come, uh, are already starting to answer. So, you are anticipating the question, that's great. So, the answer here, it is Ramesh Chand, right? I can see the answers already pouring in. So, the next question, guys, uh, it says, which of the following departments is a nodal office for the working group constituted by the government of India? So, giving you a minute or two, a second or two, in fact. The answer is Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade. Next, at present, what is the base year of WPI? This is a very static question, a general one, just to check if you know. And the answer is 2011-12. Next one, again, let's see the paragraph. So recently, in June 2019, SEBI released a new notification on liquid mutual funds. SEBI has tightened investment norms for liquid mutual funds to protect invest investors from credit risk arising out of defaults by borrowers. These changes are based on recommendations made by the Mutual Fund Advisory Committee constituted by SEBI to limit the liquid fund exposure to a single sector, especially to non-banking finance companies catering to the housing sector. After SEBI's new notification, liquid funds can invest a maximum of dash of their assets in a single sector and must keep aside at least a fifth of their assets and cash equivalents to meet the sudden redemption pressures. So the answer is 20 percentage as I can see most of you are answering. Liquid funds uh, are debt mutual funds that can invest in securities up to a maturity of how much? So we're talking about liquid funds. These are a category of the uh, debt mutual funds but it has a limit to it and it is 91 days. Next, the new sectoral cap proposed by SEBI has to comply by all mutual funds in India from which date? Okay. And the answer is September 2020. This is also important. Next, now leverage ratio for domestic systematically important banks is how much? 
Let me read the paragraph. Okay, in June 2019, RBI has relaxed the leverage ratio for banks to boost their lending capacity. As defined under Basel III norms, a leverage ratio is tier 1 capital as a percentage of the bank's exposure. A leverage ratio is any kind of financial ratio that indicates the level of debt incurred by a business entity against several other accounts in its balance sheet, income statement or cash flow statement. So the answer is 4%. The revised leverage ratio norms will be effective from which of the following dates? The correct one is 1st October 2019. Next, let's read this particular uh, paragraph. Banking Ombudsman scheme was notified by the RBI under Section 35A of the Banking Regulation Act 1949. The aim and objective of the scheme is to provide a quick and cost-free resolution mechanism for complaints relating to deficiency of banking services of common bank customers who otherwise find it difficult or cost prohibitive uh, or to approach any other redressal fora such as courts. Recently, Reserve Bank of India has released the annual report of the Banking Ombudsman Scheme for the year 2017-18. The question here is, according to the annual report of Banking Ombudsman released by the RBI in the month of May 2019, 21 offices of the Banking Ombudsman received 1,63,590 complaints in the year 17-18, marking an increase of dash over the previous year. And the correct one here, it is 24.9%. Right. Moving on, according to the annual report of Banking Ombudsman released by the RBI in the month of May 2019, what is the disposal rate maintained by offices of Banking Ombudsman in the year 2017-18? Giving one or two seconds for you guys to answer. It is 96.5%. According to the annual report of Banking Ombudsman released by the RBI in the month of May 2019, under which of the following grounds the highest numbers of complaints was received by the Office of Ombudsman in the year 2017-18? And the correct one is Non-Observance of Fair Practices Code. Next question, according to the annual report of Banking Ombudsman released by the RBI in the month of May 2019, how much percentage of maintainable complaints were resolved through mediation? The answer is 65.8 percentage. An appeal can be filed before the appellate authority if a party to the complaint is dissatisfied by the ombudsman decision within dash of the decision. So within how many days can you, you know, approach it? And the answer is 30 days. Okay. In which of the following years the Banking Ombudsman Scheme was launched? The answer is 1995. Next, recently in the month of May 2019, which of the following digital payment apps has launched recurring payment auto pay service for merchants that are working on a digital subscription model? The right answer is Paytm. Moving forth, recently in the month of May 2019, a fine has been imposed on 5 PPIs for violating guidelines. A penalty of 3.05 crore has been imposed on Vodafone MPSA and 1 crore each on mobile payments, phone pay and GI, Technology Private Limited. And penalty of 5 lakh has been imposed on Y Cash Software Solutions. The fine has been imposed under Section 30 of the Payment and Settlement Systems Act. Which of the following regulatory bodies has imposed a fine on PPIs? The answer is RBI, the Reserve Bank of India. So I can see Ram Pratik, uh, can you tell us the schedule of the series? So every day except uh, your Sundays, we'll be coming out with this particular lecture up till 30th uh, at 5.30 p.m. every day. Okay. Next, in the PPI, the first P stands for what? So it's very simple. So the answer is prepaid. Okay. Next, in which of the following years the Payment and Settlement Systems Act was passed? The answer here is 2007. 
next question guys so let's read the paragraph first so in order to bring the rrbs and small financing banks small finance banks at a level playing field with the other scheduled commercial banks the rbi has decided to enhance the housing loan limits for eligibility under psl in respect of rrbs and sfbs earlier loans to individuals up to 20 lakh for purchase construction of a dwelling unit per family provided the overall cost of the unit does not exceed 25 lakh were eligible to be classified under the priority sector so let us have a look at the question after enhancement of the housing limits by rbi now the housing loans to individuals up to dash in metropolitan centers with population of 10 lakh and above and dash in other centers provided the overall cost of the dwelling unit in the metropolitan centers and at the centers that's not exit 45 lakh and 30 lakh respectively will be eligible for classification under psl right so the answer is 35 lakh and 25 lakh i can see most of you coming out economically weaker sections and low income groups is revised to how much per annum for economically weaker sections and how much per annum for low income groups in alignment with the income criteria specified under the pradhan mantri awas yojana so the right answer is 3 lakh and 6 lakh Next, according to the government data released in the month of May 2019, direct tax collections fell short by dash in the financial year 19. And the correct answer is 82,000 crore. Next, recently in May 2019, SEBI allowed foreign uh, FPI investment in municipal bonds after RBI. Uh, as per RBI notification, foreign investment in municipal bonds should be within the limit set for FPI investment in state development loans. The limits for FPI investments in SDLs, that is, state development loans, are how much percentage of outstanding stock of securities? So we are talking about foreign portfolio investment here. So the correct answer is two percentage. Next, which of the following persons has been recently appointed as the member of advisory council of the Fifteenth Finance Commission? The correct answer is Dr. Krishna Murthy Subramaniam. Next, in which of the following places the meeting of the regional heads of customs administration of Asia Pacific region of the World Customs Organization was held in the month of May, twenty nineteen? and the correct answer is kochi moving to the next question on your screen guys which of the following digital payment apps has launched india's first upi bahi khata or bahi khata for merchants in the month of may 2019 so the answer is bharat pay and the correct one is yes bank 95th one here on your screens which of the following stock exchanges has recently penalized 250 companies for non compliance of listing and disclosure norms so i want the correct answer from you guys on your screens the correct one here is nse Moving on, let's read the paragraph. Recently, in May 2019, RBI has released payment and settlement systems in India Vision. The payment systems vision has a core theme of empowering exceptional payment experience. It aims at empowering every Indian with access to a bouquet of e-payment option that is safe, secure, convenient, quick, and affordable. So, for which of the following time periods the payment and settlement systems in India Vision was released? The answer is 2019 to 21. Next, the vision envisages to achieve a highly digital and cash-light society through the goalposts of four Cs. Which of the following are not part of four Cs? Okay, see the options very clearly on your screens. So it is none of the above. That means all the four are there. Are part of four Cs: competition, cost effectiveness, convenience, and confidence. Right. Next question on your screen, guys. Which of the following stock exchanges has recently launched a mobile app for its mutual fund platform? I'll give you one or two seconds for this particular question. 
and the answer is BSE Bombay Stock Exchange. Recently in May 2019, RBI has notified that NBFCs with assets of more than Dash must appoint a Chief Risk Officer, CRO. So the right answer is 5000 crore. So the last question for today, friends, on your screen, all of you, whoever is there in the live session, kindly just come out and give me the answer for this. So the Financial Literacy Week is an initiative of RBI to promote awareness on key topics every year through a focused campaign. This year, Financial Literacy Week 2019 was observed from, okay? Okay, so I can see all of you are giving me the answer for this particular question. So this is the last one. And the answer is June 3 to 7. I can see the theme also being mentioned. Great. Yes, theme was farmers and it was held between June 3 to 7. So guys, that's all for today. So with this, we have come to the end of this particular lecture wherein we have completed important MCQs in the general current affairs of finance, right? So in case you have any query, you can drop us a mail at hello at the rate edutab.co.in. Currently, we are running a 50% off on both the courses that we have for phase two, video and non-video. In order to avail the discount, you can use the coupon code RBI50, right? And if you have any other query, you can also give us a call on 8146207241. So Ashwarya, thank you so much for the comment. Uh, you're welcome. Actually, I'm a little unwell. So I really thought I did a fair thing today. Uh, so thank you so much for joining in guys. And uh, uh, I just hope that you all prepare well. Okay. And yes, we will be sharing the PDF uh, on the Telegram channel. The study material that we have for quants reasoning is not in English, it is in Hindi, only the quant English and reasoning part. Uh, just Shubham Chintalwad, just drop us a mail at hello at the rate edutab.co.in, we shall get back to you. You are welcome Nikhil and you're welcome Aishwarya and if you want to buy the course for 2020 please do uh, go to our website have a look at the courses that we have you can also drop us a mail at hello at the rate edutab.co.in Ram Pratik is asking the schedule every day at 5 30 pm except on Sundays tomorrow we will be discussing union budget and economic survey you're welcome Kavya Vinita, actually the videos are there. Yes, you might, you will find the explanation part, but that is not the case for all the tests. So once you need to inquire that, you can drop us a mail regarding that. We will uh, connect you with the specific faculty also. You're welcome, Kavya. Tomorrow's topic, that's what the MCQs on Union Budget and Economic Survey. Fine guys, with this I'll just take uh, take your leave, right? And if there's anything as I'm telling you, <clears throat> just drop us a mail, right? Or give us a call. Thank you so much for join joining in guys and uh, happy learning.